and of once again, I'm Alex Mendez. This is Corey Dunn. We're going to be bringing you all the latest details on Battlefield 4, and we're going to be taking a look at an awesome new game type today. Obliteration was revealed at the EA press conference. I am super stoked about this because it is just nonstop action 24-7. It's just sickness. Yeah, one of the things that I like about Obliteration right off, the, right out of the gates, is the fact that uh, the action is always around the bomb, I and mean, there, there's a central focus uh, around the bomb the entire time. Also, uh, just how, how, what's the meta game that's involved there? I had the chance to be able to play this game now, this game mode now for two hours, um, so I've just gone all at it just to see exactly all the different things that you can do with it. Uh, you know, there, there's a variety of it. I mean, it's still. The difference between offense and defense. Yep. Uh, you have the idea of going ahead and defending those different MCOM points. Um, I think one of the things that I started to notice is how fast. So whenever you pick up the bomb, no matter where you're at, the bomb is always indicated on the map. Uh, we can go ahead and hop into the game right now, uh, as uh, we're just again just kind of generally discussing what's happened uh, so far, especially with this new game mode here uh, being known as obliteration. So one of the things that will happen over time that you can realize that, that you saw on the screen is uh, right now the bomb is not located on the map. Uh, just recently. A bomb was planted and uh, blew up one of these MCOM points. And then from there, there's time that passes, allowing teams to kind of move, maneuver around the map. And then from there, the bomb will be re randomized and uh, put back up onto the map. But the main point to bring up, though, is that it will be located on this island right there here. You see it and right so that's there. where we're going to go ahead and spot where that bomb is going to be located here. Yeah, so the in case you guys are wondering what this would play out like, if you're ever familiar with a neutral bomb game type in any other FPS that you may have played, neutral bomb basically, one bomb, you gotta go after it, the battle is gonna begin there, and then from there the journey to take that over to one of the other bomb sites, and it definitely is gonna be a journey because, again, we're playing on Parcel, Parcel Storm, and you know, Parcel Storm, it's an island-based map, you can see there the bomb is uh, actually located right next to that tanker, and Again, Parasol Storm is a big map that has a lot of open space, water as well. It's gonna be it's gonna be tough to take it over to those MCOM points. So look for a lot of uh, teamwork here from squads as we actually see a squad of three that's gonna be moving up here trying to see if they can secure this. And uh, they don't have any opposition near them right now this second. And they have a actually a helicopter above them that's giving them some kind of support. So this is certainly going to help them out a lot. They just need to make their way over to that last MCOM point, which is going to be A uh, for the uh, gold team. Yeah, so you take a look here. This is what it's like in the first-person perspective of the bomb carrier. There's two different types of indicators. One, uh, you can see in the bottom right-hand side of your screen, that's basically what the bomb looks like, that little icon. Also, uh, one of the things to note, of course, you're blinking red the whole time. Yeah. You can see how... Uh, players can notice you from afar you're also again you're indicated on the map as well the entire time so no matter what the bomb can be found at any point so just again just take all those different items into consideration whenever you're the bomb carrier and also whenever you're trying to defend your point so right yeah. now again the russians still have two available points uh, they're still holding okay. on to two mcom points and the chinese only have one left so you can kind of scan around the map and see exactly where uh, these points are. So this point right here, you can see that that point has been blown up. Uh, as we look at another point, this is the Russian side. That point is still available. So uh, basically, the uh, at the top of the screen there, the gold team, they only have one point left to, to destroy. Correct. And then the other team, the, the blue team, they have two points left to destroy. So no, no, I... Back up. Those are the points that you have to defend. Ah, okay. Those are the points you have to defend. Okay. So okay. that's that's allowing your team to know, okay, guys, we still have A, we still have C. Uh, B has been taken out. We can basically let that one go. As for the Chinese, we only have A left, and we need to make sure that we hold it down because right now, as you can see, let's go and take a look here at the overview right now. You can see that the bomb is ticking away here and seeing if this is going to last any, any much longer. Nope, that's going to do it right there. So. Uh, you see, again, just getting the bomb down, picking up the rounds, and that's how everything kind of pans out right there. These game types are actually can go really, really quickly. So yesterday, we were using uh, Conquest mode, and uh, you can see it's really you know time-based. The tickets would count down, uh, but really, we just hit our time limit over and over and over again. Yeah. Here, 
these games are going to fly by, and actually one of the things that I like about it is it really has a competitive nature to it. Yeah, it's very quick, very fast-paced, and on top of that, it's a heck of a lot of fun to cast. So uh, we're going to be doing some, you know, like play-by-play -play and all that stuff as the action. I, I know we, we, we spoke about it. We got to yep. do it. We got to do it. But, uh, of course, just want to let you guys know, we, myself and Corey, have been very social on Twitter, talking to you guys about Battlefield 4 and all the nooks and crannies of the game. We also have been on Reddit on our Battlefield. Also want to give a shout out to the R Battlefield underscore 4 group, just because, you know, I know that they do some work out there as well. Uh, but our Battlefield has been where we're posting. That's our focus. That's our focus. And there's been a lot of people there asking us a bunch of questions. So Corey actually uh, took down a couple of them. And I think there's one that we really should talk about right away, and that's the squads, Corey, yep. if, if you can clear that up for all the people back at home. So there's been some questions about, okay, well, now that we have the availability to have a five-person squads, then what are we going to do? Because most of these servers out there are 64-man servers, 32 versus 32. Well, mathematically, you try to crunch the numbers however you want it. Uh, it ends up being where if you have six squads of five, well, then there's going to be two remaining. Well. Just think of it more or less, that's, that's the way it works mathematically, but think about it uh, just as freedom, having the ability to have as many squads as you want. There's no limitation on the number of squads, it's just a limitation on how many players you can have per squad. So with that being said, if you want to evenly distribute across all the squads, you can basically have uh, four squads of five, I apologize, you, uh, yeah, you have four squads of five and then three squads of four. There you go. That's pretty much evenly based yeah. across there. So, I mean, just, again, just answering any of the questions. And usually, yeah, honestly, there's still some of those one-man bands that don't even join a squad. That's not even in a squad. So. It's me, bro. I'm, I'm about that life. You're about the, that life. I'm about that life of <laughs> just being a lone wolf. You know, if you ever see me, chances are I won't play with you. No, I'm kidding. I'm actually, I actually, I, I try to play with as many people as possible because I can battlefield like to play more of the support role. You know, I just like to heal people. You know, you like, like I, you saw me with the defib. I just ran around. I was like, ah, live, live, and then I run <laughs> up to someone, die. You know, like it's well, great. That also brings up another good question too: is uh, how a lot of people are worried about people running around with defibs and just reviving their entire team, to yeah. the revive train. And then what we're seeing here, though, is that there is a an animation process that you have to go through. So it's you have to heat up your, uh, you have to get your charge going, and then you have to yeah. revive your teammate, do the charge again. So it's that amount of time to get each one of those charges, and that's where again, I think that's where it kind of spreads out the revive train. It is still possible, uh, but it's not as easy as it was in BF3. And especially like a fast-paced game like obliteration that's constantly moving and if you are just trying to run around there and do a revive train it's like yeah hey, i'm gonna heal people yeah, i mean that's very nice of you and also i mean i know that there are a lot of people that uh, like to do that but you know the thing is you're gonna end up getting hit by a lot of incoming fires a lot of crossfire especially if you're near the bomb site so it's just a lot of intensity yeah there's so much that we can continue to talk about but again uh we'll dive deeper and deeper into it so let's go ahead and take a quick break we'll be right back and we'll get back into battlefield 4.